Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion on interactions and in ecosystems and what happens if something in an ecosystem changes and how our organisms in that environment or in that ecosystem change along with it. In our last video, we kind of discussed in a closed environment with our aquarium where nothing could really go in and out um, because it was enclosed that if a producer dies, eventually everything in that ecosystem will die because everything depends on a producer. That when that light source was blocked by that brick wall, the producer died and therefore everything in the ecosystem would eventually die. So here is a river ecosystem or an ecosystem that's very similar to a forest or a grasslands. And we're going to discuss what happens in a non-closed ecosystem where our organisms are able to roam more freely. And so I'm going to first start by uh, drawing our energy flow arrows to make kind of our food web to have a better understanding of how our organisms in this ecosystem are connected. We always start with our sun. Our sun is the beginning of our ecosystem because it gives energy to our producers. So I'm gonna draw a arrow from the sun pointing to the producers. The arrow points to where the energy is flowing. So it will point from go from the sun and it will point to the producers. Now, for this example, let's just say every um, bush has an arrow pointing to it. Um, our, next our next organism is going to be our deer. Our deer are herbivores. And so we are going to have show a connection between our deers and our berry bush. Again, our uh, energy is flowing to the deers, and so it should be pointing to the deers because the berry bush is giving energy to the deer. And lastly, uh, in this example of our ecosystem, we have our bear. Our bear is omnivorous, and so it's able to get energy from both plants and animals. Omni meaning all, so both plants and animals. So the first way our bear gets energy is from our berry bush. We have the arrow pointing or going to the bear because the berry bush gives energy to the bear. Another way our bear gets energy is from our salmon. And lastly, it can get energy, though not often, from our deer. So again, it goes from the deer to the bear because the energy is flowing or the bear gets energy from our deer. So this is our ecosystem and every organism is happy in our ecosystem because all the organisms are getting energy from one another. And this is able to happen because our producers are able to uh, be alive. And so because our producers are alive, it's able to provide energy to a lot of our ecosystem. And our producers are able to survive for a couple reasons. One is it has access to light. In our last example with the aquarium, one thing that we kind of saw was that we weren't able to get access to light with that brick wall. And so the algae in the tank died. And so that's one thing that we have. Another thing that we have is our uh, clouds. And our rain clouds are going to represent uh, rain. Our soil, uh, part of the way our producers survive is through nutrient-rich soil. Nutrient-rich soil comes from both rain and decomposers. Uh, I didn't put any decomposers in this um, 
small example of our food chain, but decomposers and rain help the soil stay nutrient rich. And so with nutrient rich soil and the sunlight or in light, our producers are able to live and give and are able to help produce energy for the rest of our living ecosystem. Now, what happens in another instance? We talked about droughts, or sorry, we talked about forest fires, and we've also talked about um, sunlight being blocked in our aquarium. And today we're gonna to be talking about a different type of uh, unfortunate occurrence, which is droughts. And droughts are when a, uh, are a long period of time where a area gets no rainfall. And so with no rainfall means no nutrient rich soil. So even though decomposers may be able to provide some nutrient, some nutrients back to the soil, we also need rainfall to give more nutrients to the soil for the plants to thrive or producers to th survive. So we do have the sun, but our drought means no rainfall which means no complete nutrient rich soil for our uh, producers to survive. So let's look at what happens. Right now you see no organisms here. You see maybe a little grass in the background, but right now in the forefront, there's no living organisms. Uh, and one of the reasons is, is because our one of the big things you notice right away is our river is gone. And with our river gone, that means one of our organisms is automatically dead. When we talk about a big change to our ecosystem, they have two options. Organisms have two unfortunate options, death or moving to a new ecosystem. Our fish dies. I'm sorry. It's just a fact of life that without water, these fish cannot thrive. Our salmon cannot live. And so unfortunately, our salmon are dead. It can't live without water. There is no water due to the drought because the sun evaporates some of the water and there's no rainfall to continue to provide uh, water to the river. Therefore, the river dries up, fish die. Well, with no rainfall means no producers. With no producers means no herbivores. And so with no producers, our plants, our herbivores, our deer die out. So now our herbivores are dead, our deer are dead, our producers, our berry bush is dead, and our salmon is dead. Boom, gone, gone, gone. In the drought, they're gone. Well, there's only one living organism we haven't talked about yet, and that is our herbivorous or our omnivorous bear. And so I talked about two things. Really, I should backtrack about the deer as well. I said that the salmon is dead, it's gone. Every other animal has, again, two options, move or death. Some organisms have an easier time moving. Things like birds and larger organisms like bears can survive long enough to get to a new ecosystem, to a new environment, to where they can find energy through berries or uh, fish or whatever they need to survive. So uh, if you can easily move large distances like a bird or possibly a bear who can travel a long time and maybe even a deer, maybe some deer, some of the deer are able to move to a new ecosystem. However, if they can't move long distances, so maybe things like grasshoppers or rabbits or some of these other smaller organisms, they'll just die out. They, they meet their unfortunate demise. So in summary, 
what happens when there's a drastic change in our ecosystem, like a drought or in any big change, the organisms have two options, move or death, move or die. If the organism can't survive in a certain way, like our fish, when the drought comes, it's automatically dead. If an organism is able to move large distances, like a bird or possibly a, like a bear or other large organism, it has the possibility, though not guarantee, to survive if it is able to move a large enough distance to a new ecosystem or a new or a new area where it can get energy from. 